Countdown for blast off. X minus five, four, three, two, one, fire. My lords and ladies, geeks, geekerellas, geekulas, and geekeritas. I am Lord Bloodraw, and this is Lord Bloodraw's Nerve Rackin' Theater. B movie master Mr. Roger Corman became the master of B movies because he never missed an opportunity to make a buck. <laughs> That's why when he finished filming the 1963 horror comedy classic The Raven, and realized he had four days to go before the lavish castle sets were scheduled to be demolished, he retained the talents of the beloved Mr. Boris Karloff and the very young Mr. Jack Nicholson, both of whom had starred in The Raven, slapped together a quick tale of witchcraft and mystery, and filmed the movie we're going to watch tonight. <laughs> tonight! It's the 1963 horror hodgepodge, The Terror. <laughs> In a later interview, Boris Karloff remembered that while they were filming, they were tearing the sets down around them, and that he and Roger Corman were dashing from set to set with the camera trying to get all the shots before the set was totally demolished. <laughs> now, they did get all the shots in the castle in four days. But the exterior shots were shot sometime later by assistant directors Francis Ford Coppola and Jack Hill. <laughs> it's even said that uh, Jack Nicholson directed a few scenes himself. Well, let's see what all that uh, running around resulted in as we watch a creepy tale set in a creepy castle. Ha-ha! <laughs> Here is... The Terror.
to Colbin. I was separated from my regiment at Arstadt. Do you have any drinking water? I'm very thirsty. water from the mountain. Thank you. I... I'd like a word with you. You never said goodbye to me. In fact, you never even said hello. It isn't an act of treason to talk to me. I'm a weary, disillusioned soldier, and you're the only pleasant sight that I've seen in seven months. Go ahead, it's permitted for you to laugh. Wait, you haven't told me your name. My name's Elaine. Come on, I want to show you something. Jack's having a rough day, isn't he? I mean, first he loses his regiment, and then he loses the girl he found in the ocean. Now he's almost drowned and being attacked by a falcon. Just doesn't pay to get out of bed some days, does it? Well, we'll see how much worse Jack's day can get after you and I get through this rough patch, otherwise known as the commercials. Do you love horror, science fiction, B-movies, horror hosts, old-time radio, just plain spooky stuff? Then you should sign up at patreon.com slash lordbloodraw. You'll be supporting the production of Lord Bloodraw's Nerve Rack and Theater, presenting the best, worst, and wildest horror films ever made. Lord Bloodraw's Nerve Rack and Auditorium, featuring the best of old-time radio horror. Captain Paxar's Star Cadet Hour, showing classic 1950s sci-fi shows for star cadets of all ages. Plus, you'll get exclusive access to bonus content, like Behind the Curtains of the Nerve Rack and Auditorium, a deep dive into radio horror. Lord Blood Draws B-Movie Reviews, a look at a classic low-budget drive-in feature, and much more. Sign up today at patreon.com slash lordbloodraw for the love of horror. For 
two million years in these subterranean caves, a creature of superhuman evil was entombed in a wall of ice, waiting to be free, waiting to live again. Travel with us on a journey into a world where nightmare becomes reality. Two million years ago. Got onto that crate, killed the baggage man and put him in there. Yes, I am. It's alive. It must be. Travel with us, if you dare, on the Horror Express. Search the train and find it, whatever it is, and destroy it. But if it's alive... I want this kept quiet. I don't want to panic the passengers. The malignant power of this creature is indestructible, transferring its force from mind to mind, from body to body. Beast is not dead. I put four bullets into him. You think evil can be killed with bullets? Satan leaves. The animal that you shot was only the host. It's alive in someone on this train. You saw his eyes. One look at them and you're dead. Anything that moves near that door, kill it. <laughs> Run, run for your life. Hide, but you can't escape. No one can stop the fury and the terror of the Horror Express. yourself, young man. You're safe here. Here, take this for your strength. God knows help is a very rare thing in this forest. Take it whenever it's offered to you. That bird, he attacked me. I'm afraid you're wrong. She's quite harmless. Here. Hold out your arm. She only seems dangerous. Actually, she's very affectionate, which is very unusual for a bird. Take it back. Oh, that is too bad. Little girl liked him, didn't you? This is Gustav. He brought you here. Gustav fed your horse. Where is Helene? This is Helene. No, not the bird. The girl. Where is the girl? There is no girl. Of course there's a girl. I saw her. She spoke to me. 
perhaps you were tired from your long journey and, and had a pleasant illusion. Gustav, have you ever seen a girl here? Gustav sometimes imagines things. If he could speak, I think we would find that his mind is warped. Such is the will of God to endow and deprive. The only thing of beauty you'll find in this forest is Helene. you drown. So you are real. I started to think Who are you? trying to kill me. She knows not what she does. Her will is not her own. You mean she's insane? Possessed. She needs your help. Help? How can I help her? The castle of the Baron von Lepp. You will find her there. I can say no more. There's great danger. Find Eric. Eric knows. Right to Colbert's long and far safer by day. If you leave now, you can rejoin your regiment by dusk. Where is Gustav? What do you want him for? I want him to show me where the castle of the Baron von Leff is. No one's lived in the castle for years. And besides, Gustav has gone away for a few days. 
perhaps you'd show me the way to the castle. Why are you so interested in the Baron? I never said that I was. But the girl that I followed last night and spoke to, I believe that she lives there. I told you. There is no girl. That is nonsense. You recognize her, don't you? No. I'll find the castle myself. No, wait! Don't go to the castle. I have told you the truth. There is no girl. Mark me, you are getting yourself into things beyond your understanding. Leave now while you can. I intend to find her. Please don't tell the Baron that I am here. slide on top of everything else. Jack, get out of there. You'll find another girl. Maybe one that won't keep disappearing on you. Well, he won't listen. Anyway, my lords and ladies, you may recognize some familiar faces in this film from previous Roger Corman films we've shown on the Nerve Rackin' Theater. That grim gentleman we saw looking out over the beach at the beginning of the movie is none other than the great Dick Miller, who starred in the first movie we featured on the first episode of Lord Blood Raw's Nerve Rackin' Theater, A Bucket of Blood. <laughs> now the quiet Gustav is a bit harder to recognize, but if you look closely, you'll see that that's Jonathan Hayes, who starred as Seymour Crowboy <clears throat> in the comedy classic The Little Shop of Horrors. <laughs> and by the way, Little Shop of Horrors was also one of Jack Nicholson's earliest film appearances. And in our next segment, someone who will need no introduction at all to all you classic horror geeks out there. Bold Time Radio Horror. Experience the subtle magic of old-time radio horror every week with Lord Bloodraw's Nerve Rackin' Auditorium. Chilling audio nightmares from radio classics like Lights Out, The Witch's Tale, Dark Fantasy, and many more. Available on YouTube and most podcast providers. Lord Bloodraw's Nerve Rackin' Auditorium. Please leave your eyes at the door. You will not need them. From Haiti. Land of the Voodoo. Comes the most infamous cult of all. Bela Lugosi as Murder Le Gendre. I see death. Master of the Undead Damned. The sinister power behind the white zombie. Zombie. Yes, they are my servants. This soul killer takes men from their graves to be his slaves. His instruments of terror, and now this fiend plots to possess a woman. Only a pink. Glass of wine, or perhaps a flower. Keep it, Monsieur. Keep it. You may change your mind. 
not dead. Are you mad? I saw her die. The doctor signed the certificate. I saw them bury her. Captive in the borderland between life and death. Her brain drained of the life spark. The white zombie obeys the unholy commands of her demon master. As mindless creatures carry out his cursed will, terror explodes in horror and heartquake. Zombie! Halevi! Halevi! Never eyes so evil, never powers so potent, never magic so black, Bela Dracula Lugosi, as the master of the white zombie. of the government of France. I order you to open this door. Your pardon, young sir. I was at my devotions. I did not hear you. I'm sorry, sir. But surely I made enough noise to awaken the dead. The government of France. I've seen the uniforms of many governments in my time. What would a soldier of France be wanting here? Shelter, for one thing. Permit me to introduce myself, Lieutenant André Duvalier, 5th Chasseur. Baron Victor Frederick von Lepp. I suggest you will find better shelter at the village inn. Thank you, Baron. But I've had my fill of village inns. Surely you wouldn't want to inconvenience a French officer. Come in. What you see, Lieutenant, are the remains of a noble house. Relics, ghosts of past glories. A noble heritage is something to be proud of, Baron. I'm afraid we've forgotten that in France. Ah, yes. Your name, Duvalier, your family. My father was the Comte de Valier was until they spilled his head into a basket one morning in the Place de la Concorde. Forgive me for reviving painful memories. You must be cold and tired, Lieutenant. Some cognac? I'd like that, Baron. Thank you. Sit down. Stefan? Yes, Baron. Cognac for our guest. Yes, Baron. Baron, I wonder if I might ask, who was the young woman I saw in the window before you came to the door? Young woman? Oh, I'm afraid you're mistaken. No, I'm not mistaken. I saw her. Dark hair and eyes, about 20. 
Well, I'm quite sure you think you saw someone, but... Baron, I am in full possession of my faculties. Please, allow me to show you something. You should never believe everything your eyes tell you, young man. Is that the girl you think you saw? Yes, of course. Uh, before you say anything else, examine the portrait closely, the signature, and above all, the date. Seventeen eighty-six. But that's twenty years ago. It's incredible. It's the same girl, and she hasn't changed a bit. She has been dead for twenty years. With all respect, Baron, for a ghost, she's a very active young woman. You're speaking of the Baroness von Lepp, my wife. I beg your pardon, Baron. I meant no offense. Perhaps the resemblance was not quite as much as I had thought. The girl at the window... Lieutenant Duvalier, the only occupants of this castle are Stefan and myself. You were the first visitor since the turn of the century. Of course, Baron. Stefan will see you to your room. Thank you. Unlock this door. Do you hear me? Unlock this door. I'm going to shoot through the door.
watch Jack keep things in that strong box. Oh, there's plenty of Cuban sugar, though. Here's what happened. The general beat his friend Castro to the Cuban treasury. The strong box is now on this boat. So are a deported American gangster and his mall. And lurking in the depths is the creature from the haunted sea. You're a crazy mixed up kid. I am perfectly adjusted to my life of crime. Don't worry, Mary Bell. I'll save you. Be calm, everybody. The boat's insured. Well, it looks like Jack's playing a game of girl, girl, who's got the girl, huh? I mean, first she's there, then she's not, she appears, she disappears. Yeah, I guess, like that. I mean, where is she? Does the Baron have her? Does the old lady have her? Does she even exist? Or has Jack got a little, you know, I don't know. Maybe we'll find out as we return to the terror. Let's see where she'll turn up next. I kept through the shadows so he did not see me. He's a strange one, though. He showed no fear. Well, he must leave at once. You think perhaps he's not merely a traveler? Why do you say that? He might have heard things in the village. Oh, nonsense. He's a soldier. He doesn't listen to old wives' tales. The important thing is that he leave with all due speed. I shall see to it, sir. But of his own accord. We must show him the respect his position and rank demand. I'll put that. I understand, sir. intrude on it dead as well as a living if i intrude step and i shall leave it to my host to so inform me why have you come to castle von lepp what do you want here you seem to have things strangely confused in your mind you're the servant not i i'll ask the questions this was once a place of worship why have the holy objects been removed the Baron ordered it, when his wife, the Baron Silsa, passed away. Then this became her tomb? No, just the entrance to it. The Von Lepp family crypt lies below, beneath the cemetery. She rests there with four centuries of Von Lepps. That's been sealed for 20 years. Nonsense. It must have been open last night. The girl must have passed through here. As the Baron told you, sir, there is no girl. No girl. Oh, we shall see. Come with me to the stable, Stefan. I wish to attend to my horse. Wait, Lieutenant. That's what I came to tell you. Your horse is gone. Apparently it bolted during the night. Impossible. You're lying. Why? No, sir, I'm not lying. Hear me well, Stefan. I'm sick of all of these lies. First the old woman, then the baron, and now you. The old woman? You mean... Never mind. What about my horse? I shall get you another one from the village at once, sir. Believe me, Lieutenant, I have no desire to interfere with your departure from this castle. You seem very anxious to be rid of me. Is it because you're afraid I might find out about Eric? Eric? So there is an Eric. That at least was not a lie. Lieutenant, please don't involve yourself in these dead matters. There is nothing here but an old man and his decaying memories. I beg of you, leave him in peace.
join me, Lieutenant? No, thank you, Baron. I've just come from the stables. My horse is gone. Your horse is gone? Yes, I believe it was stolen, Baron. Oh, oh impossible, Dick. The stable door, perhaps, was left open and the animal bolted. <laughs> Not an unusual thing. In itself, no. But there are certain other mysteries I would like to have explained, Baron, and I mean to have them explained. How dare you take that tone with me? I don't mean to be abrupt, but I will have answers. Well? Now, why did you remove the portrait of the Baroness from the wall? I sent it away for renovation. The, the dampness of these walls puts a mold on the pigment. You evade very cleverly, Baron. Can you also explain the violin music and the girl in the chapel last night? You saw her again. So you admit there's a girl? Ilsa. Ilsa, is that her name? Answer me, Baron. Please, please, leave me in peace, If I you? leave you now, Baron, I will come back with a company of my men and I will tear this place down around your ears until I find her. Is that clear? Very clear. All right, now, what happened to the Baroness? Was her death violent? Yes, her death was violent. How did she die? You spare me nothing. Twenty years ago, I was not the man you're looking at now. This land, this estate prospered. My people lived well and were happy. My wife had died some years before, and I was lonely. And one day in the village, I saw Ilsa. A peasant girl who'd come to live there with her mother. Oh, I could have taken her. Those nobles have taken the daughters of peasants since the beginning of time, but I loved her. And she became the Baroness von Lepp. Almost immediately afterwards, I was called away for military service, a rebellion in the Polish province. I was gone for nearly a year. When the fighting was over, I hurried home my bride. No one knew of my coming. And I surprised her in her room. She was not alone. She laughed at me, said her bed was not for me to find another. And with my own hands, I killed her. And her lover? Stefan took care of him. Later, I gave out a story that she had died of some malaise. No one ever knew of her betrayal of me or how, in fact, she did die. Except for Stefan. For 20 years, I've not set foot beyond the walls of this castle. I've lived here alone, but the memory of the dreadful thing I did that night, that is my penance. And now you believe what? The ghost of Ilsa has come back to relieve you of your penance, is that it? Yes. How long has the spirit been coming to the castle? It, it all began two years ago. At first I was terrified, but now I, I'm eager for our every meeting. One more question, Baron. Has anyone else except yourself seen the spirit? Stefan, for instance. You think I'm mad, don't you? Right now, Baron, I'm not sure just what I think. Ah, but don't forget, you saw her too. Perhaps we are both mad. sounds strange to me here by the sea. It is your name. Don't you remember? My name is Helene. The old woman told me. She lies. She summoned me from the sea. You must go back. Your soul is troubled, Ilsa. Go back? To Eric? To the sea. Only when the sea enters the crypt. 
We shall rest there together, he and I, beneath the sea. It is an evil thing. You must not do it, Elsa. I must obey the old woman. The Frenchman, he can help you, Elsa. Andre? one calls. She warns you, Gustav. Do not interfere. She's been patient with you long enough, but no more. Instructions are to prepare for an attack by an unknown enemy. That's what he meant. Something behind this, something we don't understand. The weapon he uses, it's unheard of. Blasting flesh right off the bones. Master control to fleet, set flight pattern to minus point zero eight. Increase speed. They're coming right at us! Get down inside the cave! And now, a word of warning. This next segment contains explicit scenes of hypnotism. These scenes can be very dangerous to those of you out there who are susceptible to being hypnotized. They can cause you to think that you're Abraham Lincoln every time a bell rings, or to think you're a quarterback playing in the Super Bowl every time someone says the word cheese to you, or any one of a number of standard sitcom tropes. So, in order to ensure your safety, we propose the following test. We will show you a few harmless hypnotic images. If you can watch these images and feel no effects, then you are free to go on and watch this next segment. But if you feel any effects, any at all, we ask you to turn away from your television screen for the next few moments until the hypnotic scenes have finished. We will now begin the test. Four score and seven years ago, our forefathers brought their four mothers and their four by fours down Fourth Street. Uh, you go ahead and watch this next segment of the terror while I, uh, don't.
Tetragrammaton, Tetragrammaton. Metrotanus Adla, Nathios Sabaioth. Oh, powers of darkness, let the spirit of Ilsa sink deeper, deeper into this mortal form. Hele, be as though you never were. Spirit of Ilsa, see through his eyes, speak through his lips. Do my bidding, for only then shall you find release from your torment. <laughs> you are becoming stronger now, quite strong. Soon you shall have the strength to carry out my vengeance. Vengeance. And the dark powers will set you free, for I have promised them a richer price. <laughs> Afternoon. Who are you? An appropriate question, but I'm afraid I'm the one who should be doing the asking. I'm invited in, of course. What do you want of me? You realize that this is the property of the Baron Victor von Lepp? And that is forbidden for any of the villagers to set foot here, much less make it their home? How long have you been living here? Only two months. Perhaps I should tell you. You see, I've just come from Kleinschmidt, where you are not totally unknown. You've lived here slightly more than two years. Your name is Katerina, and you originally come from Colburn, where you were quite unpopular because of uh, certain activities. They call you Katerina the heretic, the witch. They were fools. Why do you live here? What do you want? I haven't any money. This was the only place that wasn't burned to the ground, so I, I brought my things in here. Where did you find the girl? is no girl. I saw her. She was sitting in this chair. There is no girl. I know what she is. Old woman, I know what she is. Listen to me and listen to me very carefully. I don't know what you want, nor do I fully understand your black abilities. But if the two of you have not returned to Colbin within one night, I shall come back here and kill you with my own hands and burn this place to the ground once and for all. And you know who once lived here all those years ago? You know who lived here? Eric.
come to me. Come to me, Andre. I need you. Where are you? What is the meaning of this intrusion? I'm sorry, Baron. I, I thought I heard voices. Does that give you the right to burst into my room unannounced? I beg your pardon, Baron. Stefan has gone to the village to get you another horse. It will save us both embarrassment if he will leave the moment he returns. There can be no doubt of it, sir. I can say no more. There's great danger. Find Eric. Eric knows. You seem very anxious to be rid of me. Is it because you're afraid I might find out about Eric? Eric? Eric. So what's up with this Eric guy? I mean... Ilsa's a big enough mystery, and we've seen her, well, off and on, but uh, what's up with Eric? Who is Eric? Will we find out? Will it be worth it once we do? I can't guarantee anything. Do you love horror, science fiction, B-movies, horror hosts, old-time radio, just plain spooky stuff? Then you should sign up at patreon.com slash lordbloodraw. You'll be supporting the production of Lord Bloodraw's Nerve Rack and Theater, presenting the best, worst, and wildest horror films ever made. Lord Bloodraw's Nerve Rack and Auditorium, featuring the best of old-time radio horror. Captain Paxar's Star Cadet Hour, showing classic 1950s sci-fi shows for Star Cadets of all ages. Plus, you'll get exclusive access to bonus content, like Behind the Curtains of the Nerve Rack and Auditorium, a deep dive into radio horror. Lord Blood Draws B-Movie Reviews, a look at a classic low-budget drive-in feature, and much more. Sign up today at patreon.com slash lordbloodraw for the love of horror. Coming to this theater soon, The Beast of Yucca Flats. Filmed on the burning hot sands by Yucca Flats. See terror, panic, murder. See the Cardoza and Francis production of The Beast of Yucca Flats. See a man turn killer. See a woman ravaged. See one of the most exciting movies ever made. See The Beast of Yucca Flats. A killer on 
the loose. Death sweeps across the desert. Panic. A bloodthirsty killer stalks the moonlit desert. Ski, the beast of Yucca Flats. shock to him. One from which I fear he has never fully recovered. I understand completely, Stefan. Tell me something, Stefan. If I can. Who is Eric? You recall the Baron spoke of returning from the war and finding the Baroness with another? Yes. Eric was that other. Oh, that's Eric.
I've waited for you so long. I've been searching for you, to help you. But you wander in strange places at strange hours. You're really here. Of course I'm here. And I'll never leave you again. Never. When the night comes, I get cold. My arms and my shoulders get cold. I don't like the night. I want to be free of it. You are free. Only in here, in this holy place. No. Everywhere with me. You must come away with me now. No, I can't. Not until... Until what? The crypt. It must be destroyed. And with it, the dead. Don't speak of the dead anymore. You're with me now. I am possessed of the dead. You're a warm, living woman. Who has told you these things? The dead. In Paris, they're doing wonderful things to discover the nature of the mind. I'll take you there. There are doctors who can free you from this. From the dead? The dead cannot reach out from the grave. You must come away with me now. No. I'm afraid. The night. There's nothing to be afraid of.
done. You are not alone. I am here with you now. Soon I will join you in eternal sleep. Stefan will flood the crypt and seal us here together with our love. Elsa. 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 Why do you not talk to me? I am here, Victor. I've been waiting for you. My love. My love. You know what you must no. do. Anything I will do that that I dare not, do not ask me, I beg of you. You must, or we can never be together. No, no, I cannot, I dare not. Look at me, Victor. Elsa, why do you torment me so? You must do it, Victor. Only then can we be together. Only then, Victor. I cannot. I dare not. My soul will be damned to eternal perdition. Let me see who you really are. No! No, go back! You must not! No! Ah, but stop! Let me go! What kind of a woman are you? Where are you? Who are you? Helene! Old Time Radio Horror. Experience the subtle magic of old time radio horror every week with Lord Bloodraw's Nerve Rackin' Auditorium. Chilling audio nightmares from radio classics like Lights Out, The Witch's Tale, Dark Fantasy, and many more. Available on YouTube and most podcast providers. Lord Bloodraw's Nerve Rackin' Auditorium. Please leave your eyes at the door. You will not need them. there were no reports about this thing until 1946. What could have happened then to start the stories? 1946? Well, the, uh, the bikini underwater experiments were set off then. Maybe that started something. Deep down in the strange, lurid, murky depths of the Pacific are fantastic, horribly grotesque creatures of the sea that challenge man's courage as no earthly creatures can. Science knows some of the answers, but not all. And among science's unknowns is the strange identity of the living monster from the ocean floor. How he get out of suit? No man gets through that. Then what happened to him? Here is the first undersea battle ever photographed between a giant killer shark and a woman as she searches for a monster even more deadly. Could absorb a man. Or a woman. Bonnie, cast off! On the double!
there a doctor in the village? His illness is not of the flesh. I've seen this before, and a day or two his mind will return. We can only wait. The Baron tells me you've been with him since the Polish campaign. That is true. Then you must have been in this castle for 20 years. You must know every section of the estate. He's regaining consciousness. No. He often moans during these seizures. You have keys. Fetch them. I'd like to see the chapel. The chapel? Yes, if you don't mind. It's solid. Do you have a crowbar? Yes, come with me. What is it? That light there. That's the Baroness's bedroom in the tower. The room's been sealed ever since that night. Not even the Baron went in there. Come with me. I think that I can explain. Stefan. Forgive me, Baron. I only Stephan. have one. Take this gun. Escort this gentleman from the castle. If he resists, kill him. Yes, Baron. Lieutenant. There is but one way, Victor. No, no. The holy covenants of God forbid it. You will be forgiven. If I could be sure. Take your life as you took mine. Let your own hand destroy you. And bring us together forever. Forever. No more torment, Victor. Forever. You, Lieutenant. If you return to Von Lepp Castle, I shall not hesitate to kill you.
did you lie to me about the girl? <coughs> Call it off. Doesn't matter now. You're too late. Tonight he damns himself. Yes, even now she taunts him to his own eternal doom. You control the girl just as you control that bird. <laughs> How? Mesmerism? Mesmerism, you fool. Why? Answer me, old woman, or I'll break your neck. To avenge myself on the Baron von Lepp. She will drive him to God's one unpardonable sin. Suicide. For what offense? What has the Baron done to you? He killed my son, Eric. Eric was your son? Yes. And tonight the Baron pays for Eric's life with his own immortal soul. She spoke of destroying the crypt. Too late. Too late. <laughs> Assume the position and open your minds wide. It's time for your cranial cavity. Search. 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 Ah, yes, my lords and ladies, the cranial cavity search. Here's a chance for you great geeks out there to prove your geek cred by showing what you know. <laughs> and tonight's cranial cavity search question is, the beloved Mr. Boris Karloff played his most famous role, that of the Frankenstein monster, only three times on film. But, years later, he donned the classic Frankenstein monster makeup one last time to co-star in an episode of a popular 1960s television series. In which television series did Boris Karloff wear the Frankenstein monster makeup one last time? A. Bewitched. B. Perry Mason. C. Route 66. Or D. Voyage to the Bottom of the Sea. <laughs> Do you know, my lords and ladies? Good luck coming up with an answer, and good luck getting through these commercials. Hey, geeks! Want more Lord Bloodraw? To help support the show and get exclusive content found nowhere else, sign up at patreon.com slash lordbloodraw. And the answer to tonight's cranial cavity search question. In which 1960s TV series did Boris Karloff wear the classic Frankenstein makeup for the last time? It was C, Route 66. <laughs> the title of the episode was Lizard's Leg and Owlet's Wing. And Boris Karloff co-starred in that episode along with fellow horror legends Lon Chaney Jr. and Peter Lorre. <laughs> All three of them played themselves and they gathered together in a hotel to discuss an upcoming horror project. And in one great scene, we get to see Boris Karloff wearing the Frankenstein makeup one last time, Lon Chaney in classic Wolfman makeup, and the great Peter Lorre looking very, very sinister a black top hat. <laughs> well, uh, after all, the top hat makes the man. <laughs> and now, my lords and ladies, on to the conclusion of 
the terror, as the poor baron, mad with grief and guilt, ponders a terrible fate. To him, he's locked himself in the crypt. Eric is avenged. Eric avenged? She's used the girl as a puppet to drive the Baron to suicide. But why? She thinks it was the Baron that killed her son. She never knew it was you. What do you mean? He killed my Eric. Eric is her son? You murderer! No, wait! Don't you see now it was all a lie? The Baron did return that night to find Eric with the Baroness, and he did kill her. But there was a struggle, and in the fight, it was not Eric who died, but the Baron. I killed the Baron. And Eric is still alive? He took the Baron's place, and for 20 years, no one has known. But he took the Baron's place in mind, as well as body. In his mind, he is the Baron Von Lett. I told him to flood the cellars. Now they'll both be killed. Hurry. Flood the cellars? How? There's a tunnel that leads from the sea to the crypt. Come with me. He's locked it from the inside. I'll try and get in through the chapel. Bring the sea into the crypt. 
to mantle us forever. Together again, Victor. Together with our love here beneath the sea. Come to me, my love. Draw the veil. Look at me. And see how eagerly I await your embrace. Part of me that loved you lies there, Victor, rotting in the coffin. Look at it. See what your evil love has done to me and die with that vision in your brain. Why have you done this to me? I am the spirit of Ilsa that your unholy sin gave over to the dark powers. But now, by giving your immortal soul to them, I will be free, Eric. <laughs>
free now. Free? Andre. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, I know this was only a movie, but, uh, you know, a couple of things bother me. First, how this man could be this woman's son is totally beyond me. I mean, look at him. He's got 25 years on her easy. That's supposed to be his mother. And, um, you know, I know this was a low-budget film and all, but uh, couldn't they have afforded stones that didn't float? I mean, I didn't hear anyone in this movie say that the Castle von Lepp was made out of styrofoam. Oh, well. Who needs reality? <laughs> well, my lords and ladies, I want to thank you all for watching, and I want to invite you all back again next week when we'll do whatever this is all over again. <laughs> As always, I am Lord Bloodraw saying, uh, geek out.